The Alaska cruise season gets the green light. Odyssey of the Seas has her inaugural season cancelled before it can even begin, and P&O doubles down on domestic cruises. I'm Adrian, the Cruise and Travel Guy. As always, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button. Royal Caribbean's brand new Odyssey of the Seas was due to set sail from Israel on June 2nd, offering cruises exclusively for vaccinated residents of Israel. As a direct result of the escalating conflict in the region, Royal Caribbean made the decision to pull the pin on the season. There were whispers that Royal Caribbean was having difficulties securing vaccinations for Odyssey of the Seas crew members, which may have led to voyage cancellations anyway. Affected guests have been offered a full refund or a future crew certificate worth 125% of the fare paid. Odyssey of the Seas is now en route to Florida where she should arrive before the end of May. P&O Australia have released some more images of the Pacific encounter. Eager cruisers are able to get a better inside look at the X-Star Princess's transformation into Pacific Encounter. Dragon Lady is one of the complimentary dining venues on board the ship, serving guests pan-Asian cuisine with a modern twist and eye-catching design that extends from the dining room well into the aft stairs and up to Deck 7, helping hungry cruisers locate the restaurant. In place of Princess's Horizon Corp buffet stations, p have installed The Pantry. The food court style, all-inclusive casual eatery offers a variety of individual outlets offering unique cuisines, served up by crew members. The Pantry first debuted on Pacific Jewel in 2015 and has since become a staple of the p and fleet and, if anything, seems relevant now more than ever. Quantum of the Seas is continuing with her Singapore season, despite tough new safety measures put in place by the Singapore government to deal with the growing threat of COVID in the city-state. As a result, Royal Caribbean tightened restrictions on board, including a 25% passenger capacity cap. There are a maximum of two passengers allowed in each cabin, social distancing and face coverings are required in all public areas, and the dining venues on board have been shut down. Passengers instead will take advantage of a QR code system and have food ordered from their phone delivered directly to their cabin. Some venues will offer a takeaway option as well, so that means that passengers can take the food back to their stateroom from the venue itself. These strict new measures are predicted to stay in place until mid-June, when they will be reviewed. Affected passengers not willing to sail under these new restrictions can opt for a full refund. And in some very exciting news for our American friends, the Alaska Tourism Recovery Bill has been passed by the US House. This means that cruise ships can operate between Washington and Alaska without the need to stop in a foreign distant port. Effectively, this bill allows cruise lines to bypass Canada and operate domestic cruises from the port of Seattle. Princess wasted no time in confirming their intent to return to Alaska between July 25th and September 26th this year. The seven night voyages will be on board the beautiful Majestic Princess offering industry leading medallion class technology. All guests will need to have received their second vaccination at least 14 days prior to boarding. You can watch my tour and Tasmanian cruise vlog on board Majestic Princess by clicking in the top corner or the link in the description below. Lastly, P&O Australia this week officially converted all of their remaining international itineraries for 2021 one into domestic voyages. The move doesn't come as a surprise. As Australians know, we are effectively on lockdown within our island nation, and the prospect of international travel is not one we'll be entertaining for a long while to come. While domestic cruising remains off the table until at least June 17th, when the current band is set to end, local Australian voyages will be the only way Australians will be cruising with P&O this year, and that's assuming we're even allowed to do that. And as I'm sure you know already, in the UK this week, they're getting ready to start their domestic cruises. So I'll be watching along as I'm sure you will be as well on YouTube. And I will be sitting there, <laughs> maybe a little bit jealously watching as well, but hopefully we get that opportunity down under soon enough. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button. You can also head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguide.com.au if you are looking for a cruise at some point. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at The Cruise and Travel Guy. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. Odyssey of the Seas has her inaugural season cancelled before that. Royal Caribbean's brand new Odyssey of the Seas was set to... Has had her inaugural season cancelled before. No. 
<sighs> there were whispers that Royal Caribbean was having difficulty securing vaccinations. <sighs> there were whispers that Royal Caribbean was having difficulty. Um, mm -mm. This is not going well. Passengers instead will take advantage of a QR code system to order food and uh, 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 Australians can jump on board a P&O cruise this year, assuming that we even have the ability to do that in...